Well, good evening. How are we all? It is, um, it's ten past nine. <laughs> I'm a tad, um, I'm a tad late starting tonight. Uh, we had a technical issue on the audio and video. Um, so we've ironed that out and it's also given me time to, uh, to plumb in the guest that I have for the first half, um, who, uh, was a, we had to organize getting uh, time zones organized because, uh, he's in Utah. Uh, and, uh, we of course are in the UK. So, um, I'll be talking to um, Grant Hiller from iVape in Utah um, a little a little while um, once we've had the uh, the titles etc. Uh, and uh, we've got some VT on the X Star charger, the new X Star charger that I got yesterday. I've been playing around with that, uh, and uh, we've got the second episode of MVT with Mr. Gary Dibley. But all that, my friends, is after what I like to call, and you know I do. The title. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e cigarettes and Pure Perfection e liquids. Yes, good evening and uh, welcome to this week's edition of Vapor Scene. It is in fact Tuesday the 30th of September 2014. Uh, and if you're watching last night's Drips and Tips with Davey and Andy, you'd have heard them talking about a vape store in Utah that was having a little bit of trouble with the local council. Uh, and it was due to them being close to another vendor uh, and they'd offered some uh, alternative accommodation if you like um, but nothing has kind of been resolved uh, and I got hold of Grant Hiller from iVape last night uh, about two o'clock in the morning because <laughs> there's seven hours behind over there uh, and uh, he's very kindly come on uh, the show tonight so um, let me just bring him in good evening Grant hey how you doing sir I'm um, very good thank you very much um, let me know guys if you can hear everything okay because we had to set this up literally seconds ago um so uh, let me know if there's any issues with uh with grant's audio and i can tweak as we go on the fly um grant why don't you tell the viewers the story the backstory as to what's happened um thus far so uh again my name is grant hiller i own iVape. we're located in murray utah and uh, we opened July 25th, 2013. Um, when we submitted our business license, uh, we obviously found the location uh, and then contacted the city of Murray, uh, went through all the proper steps in applying for the business license and going through the inspection and things like that. Uh, everything went golden. Uh, we opened J J uh, July 25th, 2013, and it was awesome ever since. Uh, in January, late January of this year, uh, we received a letter from the city of Murray saying that we were within 600 feet from a smoke shop that sells cigarette products and they complained that we were impeding on their business and so they were forcing us to move. Um, so at that point, uh, we retained an attorney and kind of went through, you know, all the steps in, in trying to see what the major concern was. And initially, like I said, their concern was you have to be through state statute 600 feet away uh, from an existing smoke shop. 
So in, in, in the state of Utah, e-cigarettes fall under the same tobacco. So at that point, we retained an attorney, uh, met with the city attorneys and uh, the board members of the business licensing division. And basically, uh, you know, kind of ironed out some things and was, was uh, basically came to an agreement that we were going to look into moving locations. Uh, and so after submitting four different locations uh, throughout the city of Murray, uh, they denied all four of them. And so the next time at the round table, it was myself, my attorney, and then two city attorneys. Um, we we kind of figured out that why not I, I proposed to give us a map uh, of the city that had areas that we could actually move into. So at that point, um, we got the map. We found two separate locations within their map. The first one was in a shopping center, and it was awesome. We met with the landlord. Uh, at about a week and a half lo- later, the landlord said yes, he'd allow us to move in there. And so we submitted the license for the license through the city of Murray. And despite being in their map where they highlighted where we could move, they denied us. And their reason behind that was, oops, sorry, um, we didn't know that there was another city next door to the edge of our city and because of that you don't meet county guidelines so first they blame it on the state now they're blaming it on the the county Um, so at that point i hired a realtor and had a realtor kind of dig through the map try and find open areas where we could actually move because at this point you know, we were just trying to work with them. Um, we were trying to keep iVape stores open by any means necessary. And, you know, um, so we hired the realtor. The realtor found us a location. Um, and the location was kind of in an industrial area. Obviously, uh, you know, not awesome for a retail location. Um, but when it was all said and done, iVape stores were still going to be open, and that was our main concern. So we swallowed the fact of moving right on State Street, which is the busiest street in the whole county. Uh, it's the only street that runs up and down the entire state. So it's a very, very busy street where we're at right now. Uh, and to swallow that and plan on moving and investing into a different location that wasn't street side and wasn't in an industrial area that was kind of hidden. It was a, a, a tough pill to swallow, but again, iVape's doors were going to stay open and, and, and we were going to do whatever was necessary. So uh, we met with the landlord on this location in the industrial area. Again, it was within their map. It was highlighted, highlighted in the white, which they requested. Um, And so we submitted that location after meeting with the landlord, the landlord granting us the ability to open up business there. Uh, And so I went over to the city of Murray, submitted the license again, and it was yet denied again. Um, And so through this, uh, through this battle, they've basically not worked with us by any means. Um, They didn't give us any locations. They've kind of stringed us along the whole entire way. Um, And meanwhile, we have this date of October 30th, 2014, that we have to close our doors because they won't renew our our business license. Uh, Again, just being 600 feet from the smoke shop. Now, the catch to this is we're more than 600 feet. We're actually about 700 feet. Now, that's as a pedestrian walks. If you measure it as the crow flies, it's only about 480. But it's not clarified in the state statutes how we're supposed to measure that. It's left upon the city's judgment, and the city is basically siding with the smoke shop at this point. So right now, um, where it currently stands is we've been going through this now for eight months. We found six locations, two of them being in their suggested map to move into. All six of them were denied, and in 30 days to the day, we have to close our doors if we can't find a resolution. So um, I submitted a renewal license. Uh, it got denied at our current location. And then at that point, we we appealed their decision, went in front of a, a hearings officer or a city judge, if you will, mm-hmm. and hoped that the city judge would kind of understand and, and listen to our story and 
see that we're trying to do anything we can um, to stay open and stay in business and, and find a location that, that you know, uh, deems adequate for the city as well as us. And, you know, they, they're basically just stringing us along still. Um, so it's, there was a news story, if, if you want to go to uh, Good For Utah or hop on um, I, uh, Facebook and, and search for iVape SLC, uh, you can actually read into or goodforutah.com. Um, you can actually check out the, the news clip. But, you know, it's just been a, a frustrating time. Um, there, the city attorney went on the news about two weeks ago and clearly said on the news, uh, word for word, that it was our mistake, but they are responsible because of the industry they're in. That was his quote for quote. Um, in my opinion, they're kind of attacking this industry, uh, and out here, as for everywhere, they're they're trying to, um, by whatever means necessary, whether it be big tobacco driving it or whatever the case may be, um, they're giving us a hard time in this industry. But uh, what we're doing is, is putting our foot down. Um, we actually hired a national firm to represent us for the state case. We are taking it to the state court and trying to figure out you know, some options, uh, because the city of Murray is basically just tying our hands behind our back and, and, uh, not letting us do anything as far as moving or finding an alternative location or whatever the case may be. Now, the big catch in all this is last November, they actually had a city council meeting and the in the city council meeting, they, they went over the seven different tobacco retailers that were grandfathered in in the city of Murray. iVape was included in that grandfather list. Mm-hmm. So they're saying we're grandfathered in to the actual business license, but not the actual location. And obviously a business license goes hand in hand with an address. So we are taking it to state court. Uh, we are going to continue fighting this for the good of the vape community uh, because at this point, you know, this is now the fifth shop in the state of Utah that they've tried doing this to. Uh, four shops previously in a city called Bountiful. Uh, that happened about eight months ago, roughly. Uh, and in Bountiful, they tried closing down four stores uh, and they gave them a two-day notice. Um, so they're still open, those four stores. They have granted them an extra year for now. Um, but at this point, IVA has 30 days left in business uh, if we can't find a resolution. So, you know, hopefully getting this story out there to, you know, the national media and you guys being uh, in the UK, now it's going international. Hopefully we can get some national news stories on this and really bring some sort of an attention or spotlight, if you will, um, to the issue that, that continually grows in this state and, you know, thereafter and, and and obviously, uh, just try to find some type of some type of resolution to this. Yeah, um, I take it the the smoke shop is a is a tobacco a lit tobacco shop. Yes, sir. Uh, about a month after we opened, they did put up like a little vapor flag, and then about two to three months after we opened, right under their their street sign, they put vapor. You know, V A P O R. Uh, they put vapor right under the smoke dream sign. Um, so after they saw us open a brand new business that it was already getting a consistent stream of customers, um, they tried getting in that market. But when we opened it, it was just a tobacco retailer. Okay. So they were just tobacco. Now they're selling some e-cigs and they are the ones that have put in the complaint against your premises. Yes, sir. Okay. How many other are there in the area? Uh, in our county, that's the tricky thing is there's so many guidelines that you have to fall in that mm-hmm. there's not that many out here. It's definitely not oversaturated, but there's about seven or eight ex- exclusive vape stores uh, that don't sell tobacco products. There's about seven or eight in our county, which is about a 30-mile radius. And uh, what's the next step for, for iVape? Because you've got literally 30 days and then you have to close your doors. Well, you know, the next step is is the step we've been trying to fight for for the last eight months. We are going to take this to the district court in the state, have them hear it. Uh, at that point, we're going to try and put a temporary restraining order against the city so they can't close us down. Um, but as of right now, we have 30 days. So... 
Um, you know, we, we did open up an online store. Um, hopefully that helps kind of like a plan B. Um, but it's just very unfortunate. You know, we have about 250 customers a day, 250 transactions a day in our store on average. Um, and you know, we have a lot of recommendation letters and a lot of people that lean on iVape, uh, you know, to keep them off cigarettes. And when it's all said and done, you know, that's what it's really about. We, uh, we really focus on bringing the best of the best product to our customers. Uh, we have 25 different juice lines, about 250 different flavors. We specialize in every area uh, from a starter kit to, you know, a, a $240 authentic Stingray. Um, you know, we, we specialize in every area. And so anybody that vapes can come in and know they're getting a solid product for the price that they're paying and they're getting the hands-on education and experience along with with that and the unfortunate thing talking about the vape community is you know not that many stores do that out here there's not a lot of stores that are innovative with new product and so there's a lot of customers that rely, like I said, on iVape to, to bring them what they, they need to stay off cigarettes. And when mm-hmm. it's all said and done, that's the hardest part in all this, you know, is reading these recommendation letters and seeing the pain and, and the fear of just customers that don't want to have to go to another shop, you know, um, don't want to have to find new flavors. Um, they want to continue shop- shopping at iVape, and, and that's what we're going to fight to do for them. And what about um, the, the landlord side of things? Obviously, you rent the shop from a landlord. Have you had to put um, put money up, at, in, you know, in front? Uh, are you going to lose money by uh, by the city closing you down? Yeah, yeah, uh, we're definitely going to. I mean, just the, the the problematic side of this, and the most frustrating part is is the business side of it. You know. Um, you know, obviously, the, the economy is, is obviously looking for new things to generate revenue for them. Uh, we pay, we have a staff of eight employees, uh, which right there, that's that's eight paychecks that's putting food on, on families' tables. Um, never mind that, we pay 10000 a month in payroll tax and about thirty five to 40000 every three months for sales tax. If you add that up, that's $780,000 of lost revenue for the state just in taxes. You know, that's 250 transactions a day where 250 people a day are coming into the city of Murray rather than staying in. I seem to have lost your audio there. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, he's back. Yeah, you're back again. (laughs) uh, I lost you there for a second there continue fighting it and uh, we're going to continue fighting for the good cause of vaping and, and the vape community and and to try continue to bring this product to to our customers hands that, that they love buying so um, at that point you know or at this point this is uh it's a tough battle uh, we're buckled in we're ready for it. Uh, it it definitely has been a mental struggle uh, and you know if we move it's it's going to be very spendy very costly uh, we, we've put about $100,000 into marketing and advertising just for this location in the last 12 to 14 months. Uh, you know, we've, we've invested our lives into this. And to have a city that you're paying all this money to come in and say, hey, you got to move and, and you can't get another location, uh, it's frustrating. And, and the biggest issue with all that is the surrounding cities aren't accepting licenses anymore. So it's not like we can go to the city next door and open up another shop. It's, it doesn't work like that out here. So, you know, if we have to close, we, we can't find another location. Then, then that's that. There is no option to move. So, you know, it's tough. It's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a stressful situation and, and a, a tough time for sure. But we're fighting it. Yeah. Can I just ask... What were the actual reasons behind this? Is the smoke shop saying that that you are a direct competitor to them? Is that is that what yes, it's sir. about? That's their that's their only complaint. That's their only complaint so, is we're impeding in their business. So, given the fact that you don't sell cigarettes, um, but also right. given the fact that they are now selling e six, aren't they <clears throat> impinging on your shop? You know that could be an argument. Um, but at the end of the day, an e-cigarette and a you know an old school cigarette, uh, they both fall under the same category. And so the way the state is looking at it, we're both selling the same product. Uh, you know, which is fine. Uh, 
whatever view they want to take on it. But at the end of the day, uh, hopefully they understand uh, that, you know, they, they have the option to measure it as a pedestrian walks, uh, which they're not doing right now and they're not even looking into. Uh, they really they really seem to not care. And, you know, the city attorney went on the news two weeks ago and, and clearly said it, it was their fault. Uh, they take they take blame for it, but at the end of the day, it's our responsibility to know our industry regulations. And in, in my opinion, uh, and what we're building our case around, is that's what the city city employees get paid for. That's why they have a zoning office. That's why they have a zoning committee. That's why they have city council members. This is their job. And if I submit a business license with a specific address on it, it's their job to make sure that I can legally be in business through state code and through city code and through county code, and they failed to do so. Um, so, like I said, again, we, we are taking it to the state. We are going to fight it for the good of the community, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can come out this uh, victorious and keep our doors open. And, um, you know, that just any of the any of the press that we can get such as this. And, again, I, I just want to thank you for allowing me to come on here and expressing uh, the concerns that I have with, with what they're trying to do to uh, iVape and, and the, the community out here, the vape community in general. Well, yeah, more than welcome. We, we see ourselves as a big community. You know, we encompass the whole world. Um, I've been talking to a guy in Australia who's been prosecuted by the Australian government in Western Australia. He's the first person to be prosecuted for selling e-cigs. Um, he, his interview that I did a few weeks ago was going to be tonight, but with Davey on his show last night talking about your story uh, I thought I'll get you on tonight and uh, and we can talk about uh, talk about what happened um, I really wish that, that things go well um, for you over there uh, and uh, please keep in touch with me and uh, we'll get you back on uh, and you can tell us uh, tell us what's going on in the future how's that sound that sounds amazing Again, I just want to thank you for your time and, and thanks to all the listeners out there. And if you want to catch the full story, you can actually hop on the website and click blog, uh, click the blog section, but it's iVape SLC for Salt Lake City dot net. And they can, they can check out the news clip and kind of get the full story and grasp the issue of, uh, how they provided us the locations and denied them, uh, after the fact. So, uh, Thank you guys and all the listeners and any, uh, any attention this story can get will, will be greatly appreciated by myself and, and my hoping to keep their jobs come November 1st as well. Yeah, we, we wish you all the best. I do have that story, um, but unfortunately, um, I wasn't able to see it because on the website it's copyrighted uh, and uh, we'd get into all sorts of trouble if we, uh, okay. if we broadcast it. Um, if someone in, the, in our Skype chat can put that in the general chat, um, it was in the window, uh, and uh, people can go along and have a look at it. It's about two and a half minutes long, uh, and it uh, tells the full story. We'll go to the ads right now, but uh, first of all, thank you so much, Grant, for coming on. Uh, we will hopefully catch up soon. Bear with me while I put the ads on, and, uh, and then uh, I'll uh, close the call off. Um, we'll be back in about ooh, a minute and 37 seconds, something like that. Vapacine is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. imitated 
never duplicated. Award-winning service and products from cloud9vaping.co.uk. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and pure perfection e-liquids. And back to part two of this week's edition of Vapor Scene. Um, really feel for Grant over there in Utah. Um, eight people, employs eight people, 250 people a day go to his store. He's had a license and now they want to take it away from him because a smoking shop complains. Wow, um, not good at all. And we wish him all the best. Uh, as I've seen in chat there as well, people uh, wishing Grant good luck with the, uh, with the process. And, uh, He's going to keep in touch with me and uh, we'll try and get him back on the show to let us know what happens um, in the next 30 days. Yeah. So being 10 minutes late starting has thrown my timings all over the place. So uh, just looking at my little spreadsheet while I updated my times. Uh, and uh, it is indeed time. Yes, it's time for Mr. Gary Dibley and the second episode of MFT. Yes. And he's going to be... Um, Going to be working on the wooden mod today. Uh, you'll see. Um, it's coming up. Right. Good evening and welcome to MFT with myself, Gary Dibley and Marco from Vaporsync. This is working very nicely and I can see this this is going to become very very good. Um, we are here for our second week and tonight we are going to be starting uh, putting together a little wood mod for you. Um, love some of the suggestions that have been coming through from, uh, from chat, from the forums, from everything. Um, we have lots of good stuff coming up. I'm going to take this one nice and slowly. Um, can't believe how well this this box has been made to enable me to uh, to make this um, look relatively good. He says, "I say make look relatively good." I'm um, I'm not sure, um, but I'm going to hand you over to me now in in the workshop and down on the bench, and uh, I'll catch you back in two. And we are back in the room once again. And this week is is the week we crack on and we look at making some stuff. Um, I've got my box, I've got my VAMO that's going to be transplanted into the box. I've found myself my little knobs. I thought I lost them um, a while ago. But I do have now my little tiny knobs which I'm going to be using. Switches, not knobs, switches that are going to be used for the up and down in here. I'll show you how they go in a minute. I've got a, uh, a battery holder, I've got me end cap, I've got a battery and I've got a switch. I'm going to be ordering a new switch because this one is a little bit uh, dull, should we say. But in terms of fitment, this will do me fine. First steps that we said, and if you're catching up, you didn't see it last week, I got a box at very first, someone give it to me, I went, mm, lovely, and now we're modern. Um, right, let's get down. So, down a little bit further, I have a VAMO. The first thing I need to do before we can, can do any sort of fitment in this box is to take the guts out. If you saw last week, I snapped this off the base that it was. Now, down inside, down inside here, there is a little plastic ring um, that is basically almost a tensioning ring. And what that does is, is holds the board up against the buttons so they are clicky. Someone said to me, or, or mentioned last week, um, one of the buttons had, had failed on their particular mod um, where you, you press it and it goes flat. I know exactly how that feels because I've got exactly the same scenario on here. This one, clicky. This one, flappy. Clicky, flappy. That happens when you drop the buggers. Um, now, there is a way around that we can still use that flappy board in this particular device. And I'll be using that method because what effectively I'm going to be doing at some point is actually super gluing these two uh, switches shut so they can't activate um, and the reason for that will be using externals. 
What you need to do uh, to remove the board on this is I'm going to use a, a little screwdriver. I'm going to get some pressure on the board and basically, actually, let me go from this end. All I'm going to be doing is easing that board through like so until one exposes oneself. A pair of pliers, pull out that bit of plastic, and as you can see, it's a uh, just a little chunk of plastic that is holding this board in place. You can already see how flappy that board has become. So if you give it a little shake and a li little wiggle and all this and the other, yeah, 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 they fall out. It's all good stuff. And we then have a VAMO board that we can work on. How does a VAMO work? Now, I know people have said to me, why the hell would you work on the VAMO? Uh, and I did make an error last week. I do have to uh, do have to rectify. Um, the VAMO goes to 15, not 20 watts for starters. Most of the stuff I'm vaping at is is round about that mark. I mean, the mod I'm using at the moment, I've got an Aspire 1.8 ohm coil, and I've got it in the, the little Hannah clone job, um, and I'm vaping at 12 watts. So. This is perfect for me. I'm not sub -ohming. I'm not doing anything like that. So, you know, that range is where I sit in between. 100 watt mods? What the f is all that about? I know what it's about, but it's it's not me. It's not what I do. How does it work? Basically, down in here we have a, uh, a positive pin. Now, that positive pin would be where your battery would sit in your mod. Like so. On directly, pretty much, to the pos pin. The negative portion of this board, or the, the you know, earths against the body. The body has a, a spring that goes in it uh, with a screwy cap that earths the battery then against the body, carries it all the way up here, and this pin here uh, connects to the earth on the outer of here, which is press fitted in, so you get a continuous earth through the body. Hopefully that made sense, because I said it rather quick. And now I'm struggling to know what the hell I've said. Um, so yeah, very, very simple board in terms of modification. First thing I'm going to do is swing this up a tiny bit. We're going to have to at some point test this board to make sure it works. Um, now I was going to be looking at fitment. Now this is my flappy panel. And my flappy panel without the magnets on is going to be my fixing. This one here which snaps in is my lid. So this is the way that I'm working and I need to look at how this board is going to function. If you look at the, the way that this has been laid out, I have a, a screen hole and I've got two button holes. When you put that into this sort of position, you can see that my screen is going to fit nicely over screen O, um, but I've got my two button holes at, at different sort of lengths to, to these two, which are running this way. These two run this way, this yeah, and the fire button is down here. I need to, uh, I can either remove these from the board, which is one way of doing it, and I probably will to get the fitment I need. Um, or if, say for example, this was a flappy board, um, or one that the button is broken on, you could quite simply put a little bit of glue in each button to freeze it up, desolder the button, take them off and take some solder points off to run external switches. So even a board that's got flappy switches can be used in this particular type of mod. The VAMO boards outside of the VAMOs, they, they seem to, I don't know, they seem to come to life a little bit. Let me pop my board in. Now, I was sort of in two minds whether I'm going to be using a um, screen protector or not. Now the way that that sits in there, you know, and it's going to be fixed in nicely, I don't think I'm going to bother. And what I'm just looking at now is, is how that board is exactly going to sit in there and what's blocking it. Now, if you can see down in there, I've got a component that's blocking that board and I just need to have a look at what component that is. It was a spare knob. Actually, this has been designed very, very, very well because there's enough clearance behind that board. That board is sitting in there so tight, it's incredible. 
there's enough clearance behind there to get the switches in, I reckon. This gets better and better. Funky old design, like in there. So you can see we've got our, our screen in, um, and we need to work out our switches, and we need to work out just how the hell we get a battery in this thing. Mm. So this is what we're doing. We're going to start laying out the mod, um, start piecing it together, start looking at how we can get things to fit, and most importantly, how they're going to look relatively nice when they do fit. Um, I'll pop back in two. See you in a bit. And there we go. I've released my board, and uh, I'm just offering up uh, one of my little clicky switches, just to see how they fit and. Like I say, the, the design on this box is just bang on because that's not going to accidentally fire. This type of switch is a real clicky switch. I can't press any harder because it's sticking in my bleeding finger. I nearly have blood. Um, okay, I know you're saying press harder, but it's a, it's a clicky switch. Oh, oh, I think it did. No, it didn't. Um, that's where we're going to put that. So, click your switches fit, board fits, everything is looking good. Um, next thing I need to, to work out is placement. Now, obviously, I'm going to just pop the board back in for a few seconds. That fits so well. That is just, that's lovely. If you made this, please get in contact because that's nice. That's seriously nice, well thought out design. It's incredible. Um, start piecing it together. Let's put in our ATI connector, that obviously is going to be part of the mod. And let's put in, see how nice it all fits? I'm going to put the switch in, here. Okay, so now realistically the only other thing in the equation, um, and, and this, is, this is a gold button switch, I'm going to use this type of switch for this mod, but I'm going to match it. I'm going to put some, get a silver one to go in there because it, it, it's not my ideal. Fuck, actually. Mm -hmm. Could get used to that, um, but it's good. That's a slidey bugger. So, how am I going to put battery in? Now, realistically, I'm going to have to test the board as I say to make sure it's all functioning fine and properly. Do I use a battery holder? If you look at that, there's not much room for a battery holder to go in there now. Because where's my switch going to go? It ain't going to fit. So let's get a switch in. And what I'm thinking, and I've seen this done obviously many times before, is to have my switch in. Like so. And put my switch in there. Now, this will give me... A, a positive. I'm going to switch the pos on this one. I know previously, if you've watched, I've always switched the neg, but this one is going to switch the pos. We're going to put our switch in like that, get it mounted fixed in place, and then potentially our battery is going to go in this way if it gets off the magnet like that, and that gives a can you hear that? A contact. So we're going to need to put in a rear spring there. Ever so slightly out. So my battery is going to go in there. I'm going to put a, a big old spring in here. I'm going to take the, the neg from uh, the back end of the battery, probably nice and neatly around the outside of the board and up to the uh, in through this way to the neg of that. Now, that battery is going to roll around, so what am I going to do? I've got some offcuts of wood and some seriously good glue. I'm probably going to put a little sliver down there just to hold that battery from, you know, it's in your pocket, you're running for the bus and it jiggles around and it pops out and could cause problems. So I'm going to put a bit of wood down in, in here without interrupting that nice design to, uh, to hold it tight. I think we've got a plan. That's looking good, I think. I would love to have been able to make this 
um, but I'm just crap with wood and that's the way it is. Um, a layout and designing the layout is the most important part of any mod. Now obviously 99.9% .9 of this has been done for me. Actually 100% if I'm being honest. Because <laughs> everything just fits. This is like a kit form thing. It fits. It's going to work. The only person that can cock this up is me and I can guarantee you if anybody's going to cock it up it will be me. But you'll see it here and you'll see it live. Not live. Recorded. Um, but next week we're going to start piecing stuff together. I'm going to order a uh, stainless steel switch. I'm going to start getting this board uh, tested. I'll probably get that tested beforehand um, purely because I, it's, it's quite a short segment to get some stuff in. Um, but happy days. We're back. We're working. We've planned our mod and now we just need to put it together. I don't think this one's going to take a long time. Um, we, that's the, the end. Have we done fixing? No. Turning? Potentially. I made a pen. Did this one last weekend on the wood lathe. It's for a very nice lady. So a little bit of turning for you. I don't know. If you want to see a pen turned, I'll, I'll do that as well. As we've said, keep your suggestions coming in. We're happy to, uh, to cater for all of you. Um, from me this week, this has all been about planning really. Um, I just needed to look at where everything goes and that's what you should do. Plan your mod before you dive headlong into it and, and have problems later. Back to me in the studio and I will catch you in two. And there we go, we are back in the room. So hopefully that has given you a little bit of an indication of, of how really first you need to lay out a mod before you start uh, piecing it together. It's, it's do the planning first. Um, and it will just make the putting together so much easier, he says. Um, I'm sure there will be cock-ups along the way with this one. But uh, I don't know. I'm going to show you something. Um, I'm going to be working with Marco on, on this year's Children in Need. Um, and all of us, yeah, lots of people have been involved so far. And it's been amazing. I'm going to get a little plug in while I can. Um, I'm going to be unveiling this very, very shortly which has come from rocket science mods uh it's sealed it come with a bag full of goodies and all that sort of stuff i've got a stand here um, which is a uh, focus went all over the place because of the white uh, i've got bags full of liquid um the, it, we're going to get lots of stuff i'm not going to plug the hell out of it but it will be coming shortly the live draw will be happening in december right here i'll be giving you information and so will marco as how you can get involved um, but essentially anything you can do to add to the pot would be great um sell a mod add it to the pot do the, no one's telling you you have to add to to the pot um but i like we do this every year it, it's good stuff it's, it's for the kiddies last year we raised about four and a half four seven something like that be good if we could raise that bar a little bit this year um, and already so many great people are getting involved um, and it's all good stuff uh, I'll be back next week um, and we'll be continuing that little bit of wood um, I'll catch you in two And there you go. That was uh, the second episode of MFT with Mr. Gary Dibley. Uh, and on next week's show, Gary will be joining me via Skype in the studio uh, and we'll be talking about the Children in Need raffle and uh, what he's got so far, what he's got in the pipeline for that. Uh, and uh, we will uh, we'll have a little chat about that next week and he can talk about the other stories that have uh, appeared uh, during the week as well with my good self uh, and then um, the following week the 14th Gary's going to be in the driving seat because I'll be in Scotland um, on the Tuesday so I can't do my show um, but Gary will be uh, he'll be presenting paper scene um, for me 
uh, and uh, I'll be giving him some footage instead. Yeah, <laughs> so you'll get a show, so it's all good. Um, now, I must just mention a couple of things. Firstly, tomorrow in Wales at the Welsh Assembly, Ridian's going to be there um, handing over the petition. It would be really good if we can get a lot of uh, vapours over there. It will be streamed live, I, um, I am reliably informed. Um, if you can't get there, but if you can get there, if you're local and you can get there, then uh, head on down for uh, 12 for 12.30 12 uh, and um, give your support to Ridian handing over the petition. That will be rather lovely. Yes. And a little tie off from last week's story with uh, Lorian and the uh, e-juice gate. <laughs> um, Lorian tweeted this when she got back into the UK. Uh, she got a juice back with no apology to find I should have been charged £10, but mysteriously FOC was written, and you can see there the uh, extra international airport security tag there um, with the £10 on it, um, but FOC written on it. So uh, the good thing is that uh, Lorian did get her juice back and it didn't cost her anything. Um, let's hope things are going to change on that front um, going forward. Yes, and if you have any uh, anything happen to you, you know what you can do, you can tweet us. At, uh, on Twitter, you can get on our Facebook page, you can send an email to vaporc at vapordrills.tv uh, let us know any stories uh, that you have, uh, you want us to cover, if you've got any ideas, suggestions whatever you like send us an email, yes so we're going to go into the uh, last set of ads and when we come back we're going to look at this he says bringing it from underneath the desk uh, it's the X-Star charger yeah which I've been playing around with uh, and I did a bit of VT yesterday for you so I'll have a look at that uh, and uh, yes that would be in about a minute and a half hmm see you Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids Vapors, do you love discovering new e-liquids? Tell Dripper the types of flavors you like and they'll send you five gourmet juices each month. Experience new and exclusive flavors, all with a money-back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe. Dripper.co.uk iVibber and iVibber Elixir, best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iVibber.co.uk and iVibber-Elixir.co.uk iVibber and iVibber-Elixir.co.uk Pro sponsors of VibberTrails.tv And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. And welcome indeed back to part three. Uh, and apologies if you've been experiencing uh, kind of sound, audio and video mismatches during tonight's show. We are aware there's been an issue tonight, which is why I was late starting, because we try to iron it out. Um, but uh, they seem to be changing the goalposts all the time um, for the other side. Uh, and it kind of goes out of sync. Mm. Um, so apologies for the uh, audio issues. Um, yes, yeah, so. I mentioned just before the break there about the X-Star charger and someone put in chat, I need to go to the other mouse, um, about am I going to share the waveform on it. Uh, that was Spiritus, hope I'll be talking waveforms. Unfortunately I can't because I haven't got that kind of kit. Uh, Mr Dawn has got the nice toys. <laughs> I haven't got toys like that. Uh, so I can't do uh, stuff like waveforms and things. But uh, we can look at uh, we can look at that another time. I will see what I can get hold of. Uh, and show you all sorts of what have you. Um, but uh, we'll have a, a little look, um, and uh, I've been using it last night and today, and um, rather impressed I am, I have to say. 
uh, he says in Jedi speak. Uh, impressed rather I am. Uh, yes, not bad, uh, not a bad little charger. But um, see what you think, and uh, I'll see you in a moment. Good afternoon. How are we? It is I, yes, uh, and it's Monday today, and uh, I had a package delivered on Friday. Well, I didn't get a package, I got a red card, uh, and it was for this here package, which is going to throw my white balance into uh, complete disarray, but there you go. Um, yes, this white package, uh, which I got red carded for. So uh, I picked it up this morning at the post office on the way up here to the northeast. Uh, I'm just about to leave, but I just thought I would uh, I would show you um, very briefly, and then um, look at it in more detail back home in the old studio. Um, so what did I get? Well, here we go. I got a couple of uh, Sony batteries, uh, and these are 18650, 3.7 volt, 2600 mAh. Yes. Um, and I also got a new charger. Yes, it's the uh, XTAR XP4 intelligent charger. Uh, and it uh, charges all manner of batteries and has some nice little functions. So uh, I'll show you those back home and I'll see you soon. As I said in my little introduction in the car, um, these arrived today. Well, they technically arrived on Friday, but I was at work in Leeds, uh, so I missed the postie, so I was red carded, um, and I was told to leave it until Monday. Not the next day, but Monday. So I could either have it re-delivered on Tuesday or go and get them. So I nipped in, since they open at 7am, I nipped in this morning and picked these up on my way up to the northeast. Uh, and I got a couple of Sony VTC5s, uh, 2600 milliamp hour and these are 30 amp batteries. Now they are IMR, they're not protected, um, but they will do quite nicely on my um, Evic Supreme and the SVD uh, and uh, my other 18650 mods um, because my other batteries are starting to wear out a little bit now. Um, so I'll have a look at those, um, but I also got a new charger. Yeah, uh, and it's the uh, XP4 from XStar. It's a four slot uh, NI, MH and lithium iron battery charger. And it's uh, it's got quite a few little features. So um, we'll take this out of the box and I'll explain more. So what do you get in the box? Well, you get a little warranty card. You get the mains adapter uh, and this gives 2000 milliamps at 12 volts. That's a 12 volt, 2000 milliamp hour power supply. You get the instructions, you get the XStar charger itself, and you also get a car adapter, which is quite handy. So you can plug it into your 12 volts uh, and charge your batteries on the go. That'll be very handy for me on the road, I have to say, because uh, I've got um, spare power outlets in the car. So I can always have my batteries on instead of uh, charging them in my Evic Supreme, which is what I generally do. So we'll get rid of the uh, car adapter for the moment and the warranty card and the power supply. So what we're left with is the unit itself. And let me zoom in a little bit for you. There we go. I'll get it into shot. So we have channels one, two, three, and four. Uh, you'll also see there are four lights on here, or four LEDs, uh, and you can change the voltage at which you charge, uh, and various batteries um, need various charging rates. Uh, and what they recommend on the, uh, on the charger is that uh, you have a specific um, ampage for specific batteries. Now, 0.25 amps, they reckon, are for batteries whose capacity is below a thousand milliamps. 0.5 is for batteries that are greater or equal than a thousand milliamps, and the one amp is best for lithium ion batteries um, whose capacity is above 2600 milliamps. So that would probably suffice for the 2600 milliamp Sony's at one amp. You can also, there's a little light there that says USB, you can also put a battery, fully charged battery, in slot four 
and then keep this pressed in for a few seconds and it will allow you to plug in something into the USB port, which is, if I do it that way, you'll see it. That output is powered from channel four. So if you've got a brand spanking charged up battery in port four, you can plug your phone in if you're a little bit uh, low on juice and press the button for five seconds and it will charge from this battery. That's one of the functions. Another function is you can put a battery that's failing or you might think needs a bit of uh, needs a bit of repair job. You can put that in slot one and turn the power on and press the button for three seconds and it will go into a discharge recharge condition mode and condition that battery. Now it doesn't do all four channels at the same time, it will only condition one battery at a time and it will only allow you to use one battery in slot four for the USB function, but still quite a handy little feature. So I'll plug it in and uh, we'll put in these new batteries and I'll also put in a couple of older batteries that I know need charging uh, and um, we'll see how it looks. Right, we're back and I have some batteries to uh, put in this beast. Now I have an 18650 2600 milliamp, 4.2 volt, what, 3 to 4.2 volt, this one. Uh, I've also got an NCR 18650, uh, and I believe that's only 2100, so um, we're going to be selecting 0.5 I think on this, and then of course I've got the two new Sonys. So um, we'll put these in, this one's a button top, that's nice and solid I have to say. One, two, and then the two new ones, three, and four. Now, slightly different size, obviously this one's slightly longer, and what we should do is put the batteries in before we put the power into it. So power goes in, blue light goes on, and then we're going to press the button and go up to 0.5. You can see this has already started to indicate that this needs charging, this needs charging, this needs charging, but this one is showing at green, so maybe it doesn't need charging. I do have another one which is at 54% in the uh, EVIC, so I'm going to take that one out. So let's unplug this first, and we'll take this one out. And the one I'm going to put in is a Samsung 18650. This is the one that came with the original EVIC. The lovely purple one. And we'll put the power back in. Lights go green, and now they're all showing red. And we'll just change the voltage to 0.5. And that will now, quite happily, sit there and um, charge away. Yeah. And let's see what the Supreme says on the other battery to see what uh, what it thinks is in there. The battery that I put in that showed green is in fact saying 100%. So what we'll do is we'll just take this out and We'll take these batteries out, it's a bit like Arkwright's till this, it snaps back at you. So this, this one's fully charged, so I'm going to put this in bay 4. I'm then going to plug in the USB for my phone, okay? Now you need to make sure that there's no power in, so all you've got in is the USB and the battery in bay 4. And then I'm going to plug that into my phone. And what will happen, you'll see now, what will happen is, zoom out slightly, when I press this button 
it will start taking power from this battery into my phone. Are we ready? And there we go, USB on, and my phone's come on, and you can see there it's charging. And there you are, and there's a picture of my lovely dog fudge. <laughs> my ex-lovely dog fudge. No longer with me, unfortunately. But there you go, so that is now charging the phone from that battery. That's rather handy, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll turn that off again. There we go, that's off. And you can see the power has now come off there. There's no little power symbol. The other function I mentioned was the battery conditioning. Now, it doesn't apply to 18650 lithium-ion. That applies to NIs. So your standard rechargeable batteries, not ESIG batteries. And it will only work in slot one. So if we put a NICAD in, or this is an NIMH, and plug it in, after it's self-check, we get three green lights because there's nothing in it and one red light. Press the button for one and a half seconds and the red light flashes. What that is now doing is discharging any current that's in that battery and it will then start to recharge it. Uh, again, this only works on slot one and the slot four for using the USB only works in slot four. What you can do, of course, in the meantime, is put your other batteries in, like so, and change the voltage. It will continue to do a discharge on this circuit. On the other three circuits, it will charge at the 0.5 amp. So there you go. That's the uh, X-Star Panzer four bay charger and uh, comes with the uh, 12 volt power supply and of course the uh, car adapter which is going to be handy for me seeing I'm on the road so much. Um, I paid $22.99 for the uh, the charger uh, and the batteries were £7.50 these um, IMR Sony's 2600 mAh um, Sony's uh, and both I got from UK SIG store uh, and like I said, £7.50 for the batteries and £22.99 for the charger. Cheap as chips. Cheap as chips. And as we've mentioned so many times, you know, you need to make sure you've got a decent charger. And mine was past its best, um, so I had to replace it. There was no other option. I needed to replace it to make sure that I was safe and I was charging my batteries safely. So, you know, you may think 23 quid's quite a lot of money, um, but I don't think it is quite a lot of money. I think it's quite cheap, to be fair. Uh, to means that I'm safe. So, and it also means that I can charge four batteries at a time. I was only charging two before. Uh, and of course, I can take this out on the road with me and I can have it charging in my car. So I'm never without, uh, never without power. Um, and it will also help getting some life back into my old rechargeables that I use for the, uh, the microphones in the studio for my wireless mic because I use four of those. Um, and they, uh, they tend to last a while. And then uh, they start to get a bit uh, iffy on charging, so that would never do. So there you go. Let's uh, let's go back to the studio. And we're back to the studio, and it is dang hot in here. So if you can hear my PC more than normal, that's because I've whacked all my fans up because my CPU was getting hammered. <laughs> um, that is the um, the power supply you get with it, uh, and the lead is forty inches long that long. Um, so it's not not terribly short, not terribly long. Um, I had to do it uh, not in my office because uh, the, my power is on the floor and it, I couldn't plug it in so I had to get a uh, extension lead. But I, uh, I plugged it in in my lounge to do my charging. Uh, yes that was a 1.2 volt um, nickel metal hydrate, yes, um, for, the, uh, for the recharge and condition. Um, a malarkey. But uh, yeah, you don't have to change the voltage either. You can leave it at the lower voltage. It will just take longer to charge. Um, and some batteries might prefer to be charged over a longer period. Um, but if you've got the high capacity batteries, then you can charge them at the higher rate and they'll charge quicker. Yeah. So uh, I'll keep uh, keep playing with it and uh, see if I can get on a scope. 
uh, at some point, and that'd be good. Uh, now I've gone over time, but there you go. We were late starting, so uh, let me just remind you what is on the rest of the week. Um, tomorrow night it is Matt with the show with no name. Yes. On Thursday night it's uh, Mr. Dave Dawn with uh, Keith with the pocket for the Hayes Hour, uh, and of course you've got RY4 Radio every night of the week. Um, no show on Sunday this week, but uh, Dave will be back on the 12th of October, I believe. Uh, and then Monday you have the boys, yes, Andy and Davey with Drips and Tips. Uh, and you'll get myself and Mr. Gary Dubley next Tuesday for Vapor Scene. Uh, don't forget on Saturdays there is um, this. <laughs> shenanigans uh, are on nine o'clock on Saturday yes so that's it for tonight um, until next week my friends have a good week see you all in chat uh, and uh, if you can get down to the Welsh Assembly tomorrow 12 or 12 30 then uh, get down there and give Ridian some support handing over the petition uh, and so until next week tatty bye thanks for watching <laughs>